You're a good girl. Yeah, you're a good girl. <laughs> Oh, here she comes back. Okay, here, real quick. She's coming back. Hey, okay. So, Mama Turkey got up off of her clutch. We were down to, somehow, seven turkey eggs from nine. So, they either broke or disappeared or were kicked out. And then we had the two, um, okay, Mama, goose eggs. I just did a very quick, rough candling situation. Had to hunch down in the darkness over here. It looks like I have seven babies in the turkey eggs. Oh, here she comes. She's going to peck me. And both geesers, the goose eggs, are, they look to both be good to go. She's trying to come back up here. I'm just being real chill. She's walking past. She's checking everything out. So anyway, oh, she's walking that way. She's, she's on break. Um, I had one egg that is a no-go, and how you know that, I have a 1.5 million trillion candling egg videos, okay? After so many days, especially when you start getting into day five, seven, nine, whatever, and you, you candle the egg, and it just illuminates wide open like a lava lamp, as I call it. It's just, there's no darkness. There's no uh, circulatory system for me. You'll see the veins, any of that. It's just, it, it's just like a bright light. It, it, it just wasn't good to go. So I'm taking this one out and, uh, okay, she's, okay, she's running around over there. Um, but so far, so how, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I apologize. We have six turkey eggs left and two geese. Goslings. I hope so. Okay, so the lighting's gonna be weird. How do I? <laughs> there. So, Miss Martha is back here. I've moved her to this empty, larger, open cage. It's all cleaned up, covered, and, and ready to go. She does have her nesting box in there. It's full of hay for the moment. I know there's a shadow, y'all. I'm going to come back probably either tomorrow or Friday, and I'm gonna put fine pine shavings fine pine shavings in the bottom of the hay, then the hay, and then some more um, pine shavings, just a little bit. Um, the other day, she was bunching hay. Um, I haven't seen her do it since, but I've got her set up. So today is, what, the 17th? We could start seeing something. Technically, it should be by maybe Sunday. So I'm just getting her set up. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Thank you, Blanche. You didn't it, it quite exactly get it onto the fresh hay I gave you, but uh, thank you for the yummy breakfast nonetheless. You're a good girl. All right, so tonight's strategy was to get Mama Bunny fully reset up, if you will. I do need to bring the fine pine shavings up here. I typically keep them down uh, in the basement area or near the chicken coops because I use them more down there than I do up here. But in this uh, situation for um, rabbits that you think are about to throw a bunch of kits, um, that's a good thing to have, okay? Then what I do is I have three different stations of rabbits. So in order to not overwhelm myself, I go, okay, this week I'm going to trim, it's time to trim, you know, trying to trim nails again because they're like little razor blades. So tonight I did hers first because I want her taken care of in case we have babies. 
and then the others that are around in there in that stall with her. So then tomorrow, what I'll do is do the longer line, which is only three. And then the next day, which will be Friday um, or Saturday, Friday or Saturday, we'll do the last. So I like to go, go okay, I'm going to do this section this way and the next day and the next day. That's how I knock that out. Same thing with trimming goat hooves. We try to say, okay, we're going to do the, the ones that need it the most first because every goat is different, okay? Um, and then we just sort of segment it that way. It's a lot more time to, to do the goats than it is the rabbits, obviously. So like right now, what I'll do is I will go ahead and finish off all the babies. The mamas, probably will do mamas and babies because we've got to get them moved out here in the next couple of days because I'm gonna need the stall empty for the baby rabbits because I don't want anything bang clanging up against their cage just in case. Then I also need a stall for one doe that might be ha might be bred. I want that ready for her just in case. And then of course, as you know, we have great Pyrenees puppies coming uh, in a little over two weeks or so. And so I'm gonna have his kennel inside one of the stalls so I can acclimate him and get him used to the barn and the sounds and the noises and the smells and let everybody get used to him. But he is protected. That's the way that rolls. So a lot of shifting around, but this is what I use to trim my rabbits with. It, you can get these anywhere. It's just your, your pet small animal small dog cat type trimmers i'm going to get another set i need another set i find that these work the best i've used several different things and this is just quick and easy uh and i can control it better so you can get these anywhere walmart pet sense amazon for five maybe five or ten bucks i don't know so have more than one though because they do go dull or they break so that's what we use okay Mud puddle, mud puddle, mud puddle. Welcome to Appalachia's homestead. Welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, let's go down here and let's go check on Mama Bunny and talk about some stuff. And uh, we'll see if she has babies this weekend. I don't know, guys. I've missed you. You been good? Let's talk. Okay, so I'm going through my cat foods first. James is putting out all the hay this afternoon. So the first thing that we do when we come up to the barn, besides get disgusting, is we make sure that we put out hay first, um, and then uh, we start feeding uh, specifically the goats and the cows. They get their feed, second round of feed. Then I make my um, dog feed ready, and I bring Anoli in for her to eat in her kennel so that Cochise and her don't have a squabble, so I do that. Um, usually when I go through in the afternoons, I don't have to feed my rabbits and my quail, um, a second time, but I do like to make sure that they have plenty of water because sometimes they'll knock them over. So, but usually they still have some food. I just sort of gauge it. But what I'm going to be doing is checking out mama. Um, she's outside of the box. She's not in the nesting box yet. Her due date is by Monday. Okay. So I've already put the nesting box in and I'm making sure that she's you know, well fed and safe, but I wanna set the nesting box with pine shavings that is really nice, soft bedding for the babies. And that also is extra softness in addition to anything, the fur that she pulls. So this right here, James has already made it while I was running my mouth a minute ago. Um, I like to throw a little bit of this for the turkeys. The turkeys really like it, so it just sort of gives them a treat. And I do it by the fence because some of my turkeys go in and out, in and out, in and out. So he's giving the hay to the cows. Then we will dump one bucket, okay, because uh, they get to go out and forage all through the pastures. So they have plenty to eat. Now, I will also make a bucket, uh, two separate buckets for my goats, but their feed is separate, okay? It's a different feed. It's goat feed, 16%. So what I'll do is make one big bucket, feed my main goats, right? Um, thank you, baby. And then what I'll do is take my second one out and feed some of my babies that I separate um, so there's not competition. I did not get to go to the co-op today um, to get those new feeders that I want. Um, they closed by five, and we had to have somebody come and service our air condition today. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know, I know. It's just maintenance, cleaning, and stuff. Um, but it wasn't expensive or anything major, but important to keep up with. Um, but we have to go tomorrow to get that because I don't, I, I'm not transitioning my babies fully outside until I have the separate feeders. Plus it rained today. So it was nice that we made that decision kind of worked out. So just going through the motion of feeding everything. Cochise, let me tell you right now, some of you are continuing to ask. 
Cochise is doing awesome because he is continuing. I'm on my, this is my second or third um, bottle of the U Move. It's in my description down below. Has made an entire difference in, in, in that dog. Total difference. So he stays outside 24 seven now. He doesn't even wanna come in. He's like, I'm out here with my goats. So I just opened this one up. He gets two pills every morning with his feed uh, inside the wet food. So it kind of, you know, disguises it. So he just eats it and goes. Huge difference for your dogs. Huge, major, major five stars here. I will continue, as long as anybody here needs it or has problems, that's exactly what I'm giving my older dogs. Okay, so you can see this is the nesting box right here to over there, there she is. And there's just a little bit of fur in here. She hasn't really started pulling. So I'm gonna put pine shavings in here, okay? I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. I'm gonna put pine shavings in and then just a little bit more hay, okay? And then a little bit more pine shavings. I'm watching to see if there's gonna be any pulling of her own fur. This is all we've got in there so far. We're still a couple of days out going into the weekend, so that's not shocking. I've had mamas not pull at all. I check on them. I have it on video from a couple of years ago, came in here and checked. I was like, there's nothing, y'all. And then I went out and it just nothing. And then I went out and I ran one mile and I came back and the mama was plopping the babies right there on, um, she went into labor during my run and she had them right there in the cage, okay? So I'm just saying, it's just like a goat. You can come up here and look at them think nothing's happening, come back in an hour, 30 minutes, and, and then you have, you know, eight kits sitting there. So I'm going to prep for her. We're going to find out hopefully by Monday, what's the deal. So we want to make this extra comfy. She's looking for the nest, y'all. Extra comfy, extra gushy for the babies because she'll kind of burrow in and she's going to probably kind of hide them. So I'm going to put some fresh hay in here as well. It's very warm today. We've been around 80 or so, but we are going to drop down over the weekend. It's going to be like 39 degrees. That's obviously not freezing, but it's a lot cooler than what we have going on right now. Okay. So I'm also putting in bedding. It's all right, mommy. That's all right, mommy. I'm also putting bedding in here just in case she might nibble on it. She might carry it and bunch it and put it over here. She was bunching a couple of days ago. Haven't seen her doing that since. I think probably because I had already built her a nest. She was like, oh, thanks. Pretty much done. So we're going to see. She may not give us anything. This could just be hopefulness on my part. But I like to know that I'm doing everything that I can. Supplying her with shelter, food, fresh food and water. Um, and by the way, look here. Let me reach in here. This is from this morning. She hasn't touched it, which is totally abnormal. So her appetite doesn't seem, excuse me, guys. She seems to be just kind of chilling. So we will see. Oh, oh honey. <laughs> sweet girl, Miss Pinto. Don't eat my ear. No, you need to go back outside. Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Mwah. <laughs> Looking good, buddy. So I know you guys hear the mower. James is, we're finally getting some mowing done, but look here. So this guy was over with the uh, cows several weeks ago. Actually, it's been a little bit longer than that. And he got his foot stepped on and we didn't think he was gonna be able to heal, but I kept spraying his foot with Viterison spray and he's out and about and look how good he's doing. Did you learn your lesson, guy? Did you learn your lesson? Looky here, everything is blooming out. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, so here's what we know. I've set Mama Rabbit up. We will find out by Monday if anything happens, fingers crossed. If we get into, you know, buy into next week and we don't see anything, well, by Monday, basically. Um, we're gonna say, well, obviously that didn't take and that didn't work and we'll, come, we'll reassess and come back to the drawing table of who, where, when, and how we will breed rabbits again. That's what I said a month ago, so I'm gonna stick with that. Goats are doing great. Um, I have opened up another paddock for the goats and the babies, so I'm not sure I'm gonna be planting my big garden up here this year. I may take this year off with the big garden. They have cleared it to the ground. We're not even gonna have to mow in there, people. You should know that. Um, I, may, I may give that a rest and let them have it and maintain it down and to put a lot of manure on it 
for this season and focus on the inner gardens closer to my house, right? So we have that going on. We also have uh, the cows are doing great. Chickens are doing great. Goose eggs are doing great. Puppies are coming in a few weeks. Two great Pyrenees puppies in addition to the livestock guardian dogs that we have. So everything right now is in spring mode and is doing great. We will keep you posted. Um, and again, we're just sort of transitioning a few things like moving this here, cleaning this up, moving this back here, all the spring prep that's necessary here on the homestead. I hope to start planting my gardens by May 1st. Uh, prepping is what we're doing right now, tearing down fencing. We will go ahead and till. I will add uh, all of my rabbit poop. That's the good stuff, man, right on top. Uh, just a lot of prep because I'm afraid we'll have a cool down or a hell storm. So besides my potatoes, I know I'm sweating, y'all can't help it. So besides my potatoes, uh, I'm still in a little bit of a holding pattern. I'm prepping, but I'm not necessarily open planting yet. Well, here he comes on his go-kart. I love you guys. This is the update. A lot of things coming your way. Stay peaceful. Keep prepping. Get those gardens in. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.